All right, we have found him, Davey Richards, here in Toronto, Ontario. And Davey, uh, lots of stuff to, to chat about you with. Uh, first off, uh, it came out about a week or so ago, you were involved in a car accident. Just wanted to get an update on you health-wise. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel fine. It was just some, you know, I want to call him stupid, but we've all done it. He was texting, you know, and uh, my buddy was taking me to the airport to go to Japan. And uh, he rear-ended us. Nothing serious. Just caused me to miss my flight, and it would have cost three thousand dollars to rebook the flight, which I don't have. So, yeah. uh, no. Health-wise, I'm okay. I'm ready to go tonight. So, uh, in terms of uh, Japan, it was just something that uh, you know you weren't ready to, to to fly over there, and it was kind of just rearranging the flight that would have been the obstacle. It wasn't so much how you were feeling. Uh, no, not not so much. Um, I, I, had, I had a little neck soreness, but I could have toughed it out. You know what I mean? But um, we had to wait for the police to come, take a police report and everything, and then do the insurance thing. So by the time that happened, my flight had already taken off, and I wouldn't have made the flight. Right. So, yeah. Uh, tell us just a bit about uh, your role here. I mean, you have been the guy for, for Ring of Honor. Tell us about just, just that ascension over the past year as kind of the focal point of the company. And, I mean, uh, the obvious pressures that come with that. Um. I, I don't think I really have a whole lot of pressure. I think I'm just one of many guys. I've always considered Ring of Honor like we're a team, you know, maybe an army almost. Uh, I'm just one of many great talents. Even the guys I don't like, like Kevin Steen, you know what I mean, are f phenomenal athletes, you know what I mean, are phenomenal wrestlers, you know what I mean. And it's taken me a while to accept him as an athlete, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, he can hang. And, uh, you know, Adam Cole, Michael Elgin, Eddie Edwards, Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, I mean, the list goes on and on and on here. And, uh, I've been lucky enough to have the spotlight placed on me and be able to lead these guys, but I'm, I'm part of a team no more. Yeah. As you see this transition, I mean, you mentioned a lot of those names like the Michael Elgins and the Adam Coles and the Kyle O'Reilly's, who we've really seen mature over the past year. And yeah. I saw, uh, you, yourself and Michael Elgin having that phenomenal match. It seems that it's it's been this core group that is kind of, you're really seeing them mature. And do you kind of look at them as kind of, uh, do you see yourself in kind of a leadership role when it, when it comes to the younger guys? I do. Um, you know, I've always prided myself on, on leading by example. The same way I looked up to, like, Joe and Brian when I first came in. You know, I hope these guys can look, you know, look up to me and, you know, learn from my mistakes and learn from my accomplishments. And, uh, yeah, I feel really confident about our future just because these guys are going to be able to take the wheel when I'm gone. Uh, tell us just a bit about the match with, with Michael Elgin. Uh, coming out of that weekend, I mean, so many great cards were going on, and that was the match everyone was talking about at the end of that weekend. Uh, did, did you know kind of midway through that match that, wow, we've got something really special going on here? Because that seemed to be evident with the audience. Yeah, uh, it was, you just, you know, when you have someone as determined as Michael Elgin, who, who puts as much heart into what he does as he does, <clears throat> it's only good things are going to happen, you know. And he brought the intensity, he brought the fight, and, you know, and he believed in what he wanted and believed in who he was and that's the biggest thing you can try to sell things off There's a lot of companies are on a lot of shows like you said that weekend but a lot of those guys are acting you know what i mean me and mike logan we were there we were living wrestling so it was uh, it was really special i knew it was gonna be something special going in you said after the match in, in that post promo just about that you felt you guys had had a match of the year candidate and it was because of this guy right there in terms of Michael Elgin. Yeah. Can you just explain that statement a bit? Because, um, I mean, some people were, were assuming that maybe you were injured in the match or just a, a little bit behind that statement that you made to Michael. Uh, no, I just, it was absolutely, he was the star of that match. I mean, no more, no less. I was, uh, I mean, I, I cracked my tailbone when I got power bombed into the barricade, but that's, that's irrelevant. Uh, he was the star of that match. You know, it was his intensity, his heart, um, his passion that made that match. You know what I mean? And I'm, I can more than willingly accept that. You know what I mean? It was hundred percent him. You know, I was, I, like I said before, I'll say it again. I was merely a part of that match. I was lucky to be a part of it. He was the champion that night. And uh, just as we wrap up here, I just wanted to get uh, some of your thoughts. Just in terms of uh, tr teaming with Rocky Romero over with New Japan, we, we've seen you there for quite some time with, with New Japan. Can you tell us some of the intricacies, some of the differences that you take, whether it be a Ring of Honor card versus New Japan and kind of tailoring your style for, for the different audience? Um, my style is not too different just because, you know, I am who I am, you know what I mean? But uh, over there, it's just taking a little while longer because a lot of the Japanese guys were scared to death to wrestle me, so I thought I was going to kill them. Um, but as far as me and Rocky having differences, uh, we're night and day. He's a partier, you know what I mean? And there's literally been times I've been working out in the dojo at 9 a.m. He's coming in from the night before, you know, loaded off his ass. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but a, what a great talent in the ring, right? You know, we had success here in Ring of Honor, you know, as no remorse score. We've had success over in Japan as no remorse score. So I think that speaks a lot about our chemistry. But as far as over there, it's just, it's, I mean, it's, they're legends, you know. You have Jushin Liger, you know, Tiger Mask, these guys. It's a, you know, they're great talents here. They're legends over there. Either way, I'm in, the, I guess, a tough competition. And as well, just uh, your Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu training, it's, it's such a big part of, of your style. Day-to-day, uh, -day, I mean, are you pretty much in the gym every day working on that? Yeah, uh, I mean, a typical week for us, for me and Kyle, we usually put in about 12, 13 hours of training. 
Um, that's a typical week. Um, usually, you know, two days in jujitsu, and we throw in some wrestling classes. And Kyle is a little bit more Muay Thai than I do. And uh, but yeah, jujitsu is a huge part of my life. Uh, as is pro wrestling. I mean, I, I look at everything the same. Whether it be my amateur wrestling days, my professional wrestling days, which are now, my Brazilian jiu-jitsu days, which I think are going to be my future. You know, it's, to me, it's all the same. It all interrelates. So you know, it's uh, I just pretty much live wrestling. <laughs> awesome stuff. Well, Davey, uh, we thank you very much for this time. Thank you, man. Hope you enjoy the the Tim Hortons Canadian coffee. It's, oh, it's great. It's, uh, I get it in Ohio too. <laughs> oh, that's right. Tim Hortons is kind of is not as good as Canadian, but as you know, close as I can get. But yeah, there you go. Well, we wish you all the best uh, tonight and in the future. Thanks a lot.